In our last lesson, we considered the endangered golden tree frog, which lives only on two peaks in the southern Caribbean island of Trinidad. We did note, however, that there were several similar kinds of endangered frogs in other parts of the world. Welcome again. In today's lesson, we consider topic 4.2.6. Describe the case histories of three different species. One that has become extinct. Another that is critically endangered and a third whose conservation status has been improved by intervention. The Monte Verde Cloud Forest Reserve, Costa Rica. A very similar environment to that of the golden tree frog of Trinidad. This is Bufo periglinus, the golden toad. This animal was recorded for the first time in 1966. It was last seen in 1989. After a thorough search, the IUCN declared Bufo periglinus, the golden toad, extinct. Let's consider a model to understand the factors that might have led to the extinction of the golden toad. Recalling that a model is a simplified description designed to show the structure or workings of an object, a system, or a concept. And a system is an assemblage of parts and the relationship between them, which together constitute an entity or a whole. There are inputs into a system, and there are outputs from the system. The population of the golden toad was affected by certain factors. Some of these inputs into the system were El Nino, changing weather patterns that brought reduced rainfall to the cloud forest in the late 1980s. The chytrid fungus, identified in the late 1990s, may have been a factor in the decline of the golden toad. Habitat loss is another factor to consider. Ultraviolet B radiation increased in the 1980s. Changes in pH as a result of pollution. These are some of the suggested factors that may have led to the extinction of the golden toad. This unique amphibian has become an icon of extinction. Frogs throughout the world are currently under great threat. And even though we're not certain that the chytrid fungus was directly responsible for the extinction of the golden toad, we do know that the chytrid is currently a major threat to not just frogs, but to several amphibians throughout the world. For more on the chytrid fungus, I would like you to visit this link. Staying in Central America and the Caribbean, we consider the leatherback turtle, Dermercales coriaceae, another iconic species. The descendants of the largest turtle in the world swam the oceans 100 million years ago. Today, the current sixth or Holocene extinction sees them as one of the candidates that are critically endangered. All of the spots in yellow represent B. 
beaches where leatherbacks lay their eggs. The red spots are the densest beaches in the world. One of those beaches is here in Costa Rica and another hot spot is in Trinidad and in the Guyanas. This picture shows a female turtle completing the nesting process on the Caribbean island of Tobago. Leatherbacks are truly international citizens. They're found in all of the oceans of the world and they lay their eggs in the Americas, Africa, and in Asia. A female leatherback can live for 60 years and would nest every two years, returning to the very beach upon which she hatched to lay 80 to 100 eggs four times for the season. Some of the threats that face this species include poaching. The eggs are highly sought after, especially in parts of Asia, and this is one of the key concerns in the extinction of the turtles in places like Malaysia. Fishing is another concern, and so is habitat loss as development occurs on beaches that were previously desolate. But the issue of fishing presents a major threat to the leatherbacks. In this picture, subsistence fishermen in Mozambique prepare a gill net. It is nets like these, as well as commercial long lines that present a severe threat to these marine giants. I would like you to visit the Worldwide Fund for Nature website, the WWF, to learn more about the threats to the leatherbacks. To address the problems associated with poaching and habitat loss, we need to examine the human needs and the human activities associated with harvesting of eggs and hunting of turtles. We need to examine how these activities affect the turtles, what are the ecological effects of leatherback loss, and just as important, we need to examine the social impacts of leatherback loss and the economic impacts of leatherback decline. I would like you to stop at this point and visit the World Wildlife Fund website to get a better understanding of the factors that contribute to the international issue of leatherback decline. Then I would like you to use the information that you get to organize a model to plan for sustainable development. A model that would allow fishing and would allow local communities to thrive while at the same time rescuing the leatherback from the brink of extinction. To achieve such a plan, international cooperation is required. A number of stakeholders need to be engaged at all levels. So once again, we will build a model to describe the system, the assemblage of parts, and the relationships between them so that we can quickly present a plan for saving the leatherbacks. It might mean that you'll have to look up terms like subsidiarity and empowerment and understand what's an NGO and what's a grassroots organization. You can use these terms as prompts to lay out your own model for saving the leatherbacks.
feel free to exclude some of these and to include areas of your own. I would also like you to read this paper and to evaluate the use of TEDs, which you will find out about in the paper, in protecting leatherbacks and other marine turtles. Sometimes the plan for sustainable development actually comes together. And I would like you to visit this URL for a most up-to-date TED Talk on the California condor case study and this one for some additional information. Finally, I would like you to explain the social, economic, and scientific reasons for the success of the condor conservation. And why do some species capture human attention more than others? As you consider the condor, I have listed some issues on this side that brought the bird under threat in the first place. And I've listed some strategies that were used to rescue the species from the brink of extinction. Using these, I would like you to create a model to show the relationships among all of the stakeholders and how they work together to solve the case of the California condor.